Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How you doing, Jay? Surviving another Monday? <laughs> Every day seems like the same, Michael. It really does. Um, so before we get into this week's discussion, quick shout out. Thank you so much to Bruce at HypeBot for everything you do to share the Music Biz Weekly podcast, including yeah, thanks. emails and everything else. Bands in town, we love you for all your support as well. And of course, discmakers.com for your continued sponsorship of the Music Biz Weekly podcast. We know it's a digital world, but there's still an important role for physical media for today's independent musician. Digital royalty payments are so small that selling products like CDs, vinyl, t-shirts, online, because you're not going to be selling them at gigs for a while, or at least gigs of any sub substance in attendees. Right, right. Um, so be selling them online has become such an important income generator. For every CD you sell at a gig, you need roughly 3,000 streams to make that same amount of money, and that's a lot of streams. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even t-shirts. So we put together a cool little offer with Disc Makers for all of our listeners. Head over to discmakers.com, place an order for 100 or more CDs, and in the promo field, when you check out, put in free biz, F-R-E-E-B-I-Z, free biz. Enter that in the promo code, and you'll save up to $150 on shipping. That's a nice chunk of change sure that you is. can save. So thank you so much for discmakers.com for putting that offer together for all the Music Biz Weekly listeners out there. So, um, you know, as, as we've dealt with so many times, we fly by the seat of our pants here. We had a guest scheduled today. He had to change at the last minute. We're getting them rescheduled. So, Jay and I are brainstorming, and um, you know, I, I, I let me just I'll just come right out and say it. Yesterday, I had a client that I've been working with for a number of years, he was a New York Times best selling business author, keynote speaker, podcaster, passed away. I mean, it was it was a shock. Um, he had suffered uh, an aneurysm two weeks earlier, was rushed to the hospital, was on a ventilator for two weeks, took him off the ventilator and um, passed away. Um, got the word yesterday morning at 7 a.m. that this happened. Now, I, I, I am sure, Jay, you're probably like me. You sort of in the back of your mind are always like, that's part of my role. I have to be prepared to do something like that because I was in charge of all of his, his website, his Facebook page, socials. his personal profile, all of his socials, his, his YouTube channel, everything. You know, when it came to the technology, I was responsible for it. Right. And, you know, in the back of your mind, you're like, well, okay, how would I handle this if, if it ever happened? I'd never dealt with it before. I don't know about you. I've never had a client pass away. I've, I've dealt with clients where, you know, there was a quick change in a band member or a replacement because somebody got sick for the short term, but nothing as tragic as passing away. Yeah. Um, so I thought maybe we could talk about that because, you know, not, not being morbid, but we've all got to kind of be prepared for being unprepared like that. Yep. Um, and you know, he had a team, myself, his speaking agent who kind of acted as a role of a manager. He had a research assistant that he worked with and he had his podcast host and, you know, we're quickly jumping online going, okay, what do we do? And we felt we could kind of take the time to prepare a message, but lo and behold, because of who he was, the word was already getting out. Friends, colleagues, business associates. He's, you know, he's interviewed like 17,000 CEOs over his career, and he's given thousands and thousands of major business keynote addresses. So 
speaking agents and other colleagues were starting to get wind that this had happened. Um, not that they were in, we were fortunate. They weren't posting inaccurate information and they weren't posting anything disparaging. And I'm sure we've seen stuff like that happen with celebrities where you're now doing damage control because somebody's posting inaccurate news. Um, wasn't inaccurate, but it was just like, okay, we really need to get ahead of this now because it, yeah. the message needs to come from him, from his world, the official statement. Yeah. Um, how quickly can we get this put together? What, how long does it need to be? What do we need to say? How much detail goes into it? Do we mention family members by name? Do we respect their privacy and keep them out of it? All of a sudden, all of this stuff that I think we've all encountered, at least in reading statements about somebody who passes away, I was thrust into as to, okay, what do we got to do here? Yeah. And, and, you know, I was close to him. We would have coffees, coffee quite a bit and we would chat. And so, you know, I was, I was fighting that, oh my God, I just got punched in the gut. I lost a friend, but I got to keep a clear head yeah, to get us gotta, through at least this first 24 hours mm -hmm. because we've got to, we've got to present him as he should be presented, not just let it happen. Yeah. Um, so we probably spent a couple hours going back and forth on the messaging, the statement, you know, it's like, it doesn't need to be a page long filled with condolences and memories and obituary, you know, we can add that stuff down the road. Let's just get the basics out so we can inform everybody. And this is really crucial. And we've sort of alluded to this for different reasons in the past, but this is when having control of all of your accounts becomes extremely important. So fortunately, I had access to everything but his personal email. His personal email, his speaking agent had access to. But I had all of his personal Facebook, everything. He just allowed me to post to it and have passwords to it. So right off the bat, that was a huge weight lifted off of like, how would we get access to post something on his Facebook? Right. You know, his family didn't have it or this person didn't have it. Who's got it? What about Twitter? What about YouTube? What about, you know, he, everything, you know, everything, everything that you've got that's your name. Um, if you don't have access to it, that just throws a huge hurdle in front yeah, of you. Because you can get it, right? You can get access as a family member or a representative, but it could take you days, weeks? probably more weeks, uh, in order to secure that. And in the meantime, other people are posting to these socials. And, and one of the things that hit me when you were talking about that is you need to have the plan that we're about to kind of go into, but you also need to know, do you want um, your socials shut down? Yes. Um, immediately upon your your passing or would you want to leave them up i've had a couple of friends that have passed and they wanted theirs left up so people could you know it was like a, a, a memorial or a memorial right where people can chime in and talk about memories but you're also talking about you know that statement that you made that that's not an obituary it's right. really more of, it, it serves a, a different purpose, right? It's something immediate. It's, it's just confirmation of an event that happened. We official. needed to, the official confirmation. Yes, it had to officially come from, from my client's world that this of is course. what happened. It and, can't and, just and, be and, a and, 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 and listen, of course, we're not signing anything, his name. We signed it, you know, his team and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but, but yes, it is so critical because I don't know. I, I always have felt, and not just in instances like this, but there's nothing worse for any of my clients than being the last one 
to confirm what's been known by everybody else and essentially confirmed by everybody else for days or weeks. Yeah, It doesn't good. look good if you are the last one to say something about it because people are going to go to your Facebook page for the official statement. They're yeah. going to go to your website for the official statement. They're going right. to... They're going to go in a multitude of places where you are officially present and look for that official statement. So that, that's, you know, what I sat down was like, okay, and I did this, a list. Here's all of the places we've got to hit these statements. And, you know, things like the link, his LinkedIn account. He's a businessman. He's got a lot. He's got thousands of LinkedIn contacts. But he's got also a LinkedIn business page. You need to post something on that page. Yeah. You know, he's got a WhatsApp discussion group. Well, we got to go post something on the WhatsApp discussion group. So it's it was quickly me organizing all of these outlets that have to have, and this is key, the same message. Mm-hmm. Has to be consistent. It has, it has to, to be, be consistent. Official. It has official. to be one that you yep. learned. You had to have it approved by the estate, by family, by whoever. You, you need that official verified statement quickly. And again, it doesn't have to be an extensive, extensive obituary, but it has to be a brief statement that gets out quickly. And then to your point, there's so many places where it needs to be posted that you might not even consider, you know, the ones that you're mentioning now, obvious things like socials, but there's so many other places online where people live and even, you know, websites, you know, letting people know officially, whether it's through a press release or through your own network, yep. that you represent this artist and that it is official. Because when I hear about someone's passing, the first thing I do, I don't look in the news because sometimes there's outlets that just post things. I go to where you just mentioned, I go to their official socials and see are the people who represent him, because we all know that on socials, it's not always the artist that posts. It can be a digital marketing person. It can be family. I mean, sometimes people help each other with their socials, but when when they have login information and it comes off from that account, that's official. That carries a lot more weight. Yep, yep. And, you know, you you brought up the point of, you know, what what do you want to happen post passing away with all of your socials, your website and everything. And, you know, we were discussing that, you know, my opinion was because of how much he's touched people and, and helped people. I was like, I think this stuff needs to live somehow. We, we don't know how, but I think it should live as a tribute to him to allow other people to still take in his 230 plus episodes of his podcast and his yeah. countless blogs that he's written, I think it would be an injustice to his legacy to just remove all of that. Yeah, but and here, share, here, yeah, and to share in his in the grief. There's something about community when someone passes away, if it is their wish. There's something very cathartic. There's something very, you know, beautiful about having people post on socials. Yeah, the first time I met this guy was here. That, that's exactly a great what, story. That's exactly what is happening now in the last 24 hours is countless tributes are being posted across all socials. <clears throat> you know, I've seen people who are like, oh, you know, I went and pulled this video off of his YouTube and this this moment in this keynote really hit home with me and it says something now. And, you know, you want that to happen. And, and, and listen, you know, clearly like his wet, here's, here's a quick um, thought, you know, he's got a blog. We, we posted a statement on the blog, but then I'm like, yeah, but a lot of people may not necessarily follow the blog. As we know, looking at your stats, everybody lands on your homepage. Oh God, I got to do a quick retweak on the homepage to put a statement top center yeah. That this has happened because you don't want people having to dig and hunt and drill down to find something. So, you know, you've got to be ready to do that. You know, did you have a web developer that you now can't reach, who can't change your website design quickly enough? These were things that we were fortunate that we had already in our control. But to your point about shutting down stuff, you know, the way this happened 
he had no time, even though it had happened two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, he had, how, he, he was on a ventilator. So he, he basically wasn't able to communicate anything. He couldn't sit here and say, this is my wish. This is what I want. Please say this. So the last thing he's thinking about, you know, it's the last thing he's thinking about. And, and honestly, while that's happening, it's the last thing all of us were thinking about. We were like, he's going to, he's strong. He's positive. He's going to fight through this. You know, the doctors are going to take care of him. You know, you don't immediately go to the worst. You try and stay positive for everybody on the team. Um, yeah. But, you know, with so, so because it can happen literally in the blink of an eye, you may not ever have that opportunity to say, oh, here's my sister's phone number. She's got my password or here's this or this. Or here's my when, wishes. Here's my, you know, when it I happens. I want them left up or I want them taken down. Yeah. When it happens, it's going to be too late for all of that. Now you're trusting the team members around you to do what's in your best interest. I feel like we did, but uh, you know, I think, I think what I'm getting to in all of this is this is this is something, you know, and I'm sure some of our listeners are like, yeah, please, I'm 20 years old. I'm not going to, I don't have to worry about this. Again, blink of an eye. You just don't a, know. A, an aneurysm that, I mean, he was he fit as a fiddle. He would hike 20 miles. He exercised daily for 40 years. I mean, boom, it just happens. We hear those stories all the time. It was something that was never diagnosed. How did it happen? It was a heart ailment that was just never diagnosed. And that was the moment. Yeah, so th this, this isn't, don't let your age play into this. This is something you need to think about yeah. if you are a public figure of any level. Because somebody's yeah. probably going, yeah, well, nobody's going to care if I die. Well, you know, sadly, uh, some, somebody is going to care. There may Absolutely. not be as many, but somebody's going to care. You've got even one fan needs to know what's going yeah. on. The so, bottom line is, you know, you need to plan, right? That's what you're saying there. Yeah. You need to plan for this. And I think part of that plan, you know, I have artists who they actually know who is kind of the lead on their Wikipedia page. Well, you want the accurate information to be attributed and added to Wikipedia. So, it's the, you know, the website and the socials and all these things that you mention, but I think having that plan in place, meaning having it in one place, um, either on your computer or somewhere where someone on your team knows how to get to it and where a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the artists that I work with, I've got all their login information, you know, because I, I help them with their socials, their ECRM, whatever. But there are artists where I don't control that. The yep. manager doesn't control it. Only the artist does. And, you know, whether it's, let's say they use uh, MailChimp or Constant Contact and they have lists in there, um, a lot of these things are, you know, they're private things. And you want to make sure that you have a plan for all of these things in one place where someone on your team like you or me or manager, family member, Someone knows that if something happens to Michael, you know, I know how to get in there and I know his wishes um, of leaving them up so people can pay tribute. I know that in advance. And if I don't know that, I know where to go to get all of that information in one fell swoop. You have to have a plan. Yeah, you, you, you really do. I mean, I, I think though part of it is as, as much as you like to think you have a plan and you're prepared for it, you also have to realize you're not prepared. You won't be. You won't be prepared when something tragic like this happens. Um, you know, th things pop up. Oh, a family member didn't doesn't like that word, that statement, and how do you address that? And you know, you you, you can't sit here and think I'm going to get 15 different family members to approve a statement. I mean, that's no more effective than a band sitting here going, well, I need to have 20 people approve this post to go on Facebook. That's not efficient. That's not effective. Um, yeah. But stuff like that's going to happen. And how do you get through it? How, what do you stay 
focused on, you know, the 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 speaking agent was has is the public face for my client. So she knows a lot of his colleagues. She was getting inundated with emails and phone messages and and everything else. So I'm just like, you know, I kept telling her, let's just focus. We got to just get a simple basic message out. It's a it's a very good heartfelt message. If we need to tweak it, we can. Don't worry. I have access. If you want to change that period to a comma, I will gladly take care of that. Do we want to add one word or take one word out? I can do all of that. Um, yeah. That just, I think the biggest takeaway was having that access removed such an incredible amount of stress and worry from this process. I mean, I can't imagine what everybody would have been going through if I was like, I'm sorry, I just can't get in. I have no access to this stuff. Yeah. And the person that does isn't answering the phone, is gone on vacation for a month. Is you know, countless reasons could come up, valid reasons. Yeah. Um, that would just add to all of the stress that's going on on top of the tragic you know, event that just happened. So, you know, making sure somebody who you trust has access to this stuff. Yeah. And, and I think that's and, a key. And, and, and I think it goes a little yeah. further than just trust because you could see her and go, well, I trust my, my mother. I'll give her all the password. That's great to some extent, but your mother may not know what to do with all of this stuff. She's yeah. probably never logged in. She doesn't understand how that might work, how to get into your website. It's a WordPress site. How do I add a statement here? So it's got to be somebody who you trust with that access, but who can also act upon having yeah. that access quickly and efficiently to get this done. Because, you know, now it's 24 hours later and yeah, that yesterday is behind us. Now we're sitting back commenting to each other like, oh, have you seen all these comments over here? And oh my God, there's been 500, you know, likes on this post. And, you know, it's, that's what I guess, you know, you want to be dealing with on day two. You don't want to be dealing with more panic and stress and anger and disappointment. Trying to get access. You want to be yeah. remembering, you know, because now we've moved to the next phase of, <clears throat> all right, how could we potentially keep his legacy alive? Do we reach out to some colleague of his and say, would you like to assume the role of his podcast? Would you like to become a podcaster under his brand, under his name? because he loved you, he trusted you, he agreed with your philosophies, whatever it is. What do we do? You know, do we, do we take some of the great tributes that are coming in and put them together into a nice blog post that now we post another post that's just tributes from colleagues and friends? And do we find a video, an old video clip that had a special moment in it? You know, now we're focusing on you know, the memories, the good times, the tributes to him, as opposed to trying to put a fire out. Yeah, now it's positive and not negative. Yeah, now yeah. now it's positive. You know, it's there's always going to be negative because, you know, I, at the end of the yesterday, after I was gone through all that, I literally was just like, I collapsed on the couch. And I was just like, my head is pounding. I've got a headache. I was exhausted because I probably forgot to eat all day long. You know, you were just mentally going through, did I do this, 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 and this? I finally, you know, went to sleep. And it's like, oh, okay. Woke up. I know I woke up not having worry and stress waiting for me. Yeah. Now yeah, it's I like, part what that, do we Michael, do? What do we do moving forward? Yeah. I, you know, I had a, a friend of mine pass away and his brother um, took over and, you know, we helped him a lot, but to your point, because he had access to the socials and the website, it took a lot of stress off. There was one social where a password had been changed, so he had to go through the process and, you know, basically say, listen, you know, my brother passed away, 
you know, I need to take care of this. And, and they, they did eventually get back to him. But other than that, because he had everything in one place and he trusted his brother so much that he knew that all of his <clears throat> login credentials were in one place, it made things a lot easier. You can do all of this without that <clears throat> access. Um, I believe a lot of them need the death certificate. But that, like we said before, that could take days, probably weeks, maybe even longer to secure all of that. And it just makes it harder going forward. If you have that plan together and you put all this in one place and you either designate a person or you have someone on your team that has access to that information, it'll make it so much easier. Yeah, so so much I, I, I think just so much less stressful. I can't, I, I just, again, I can't imagine the stress as, as the technical person, what I would have been dealing with if I didn't have access yeah. to all of his passwords, you know, and it, it, it goes back to what we've talked about so many times in the past, you know, whether you keep a, a spreadsheet, a, a word doc, whatever it is, list every single thing. Thing that has a username and a login, you know, I, I, I would suggest going one step further and getting a password manager like LastPass or something like that. So all of this stuff is kept securely in there. And, um, you know, you, you just need to give one person that password. But, you know, uh, it, it comes down to, sure, maybe you kept them all on an Excel spreadsheet. Does anybody know where that Excel spreadsheet is kept? Yeah. Because maybe you, in your attempt to be a little secure, named it an odd name and buried it in some folder, and you're the right. only person who knew it was there. And maybe somebody doesn't have the password to even get into your computer to find it, even if it was named Exactly. Passwords. You know, you don't, yeah, exactly. You need a password to your computer. You need a password to get into your cell phones. I mean, you know, we hear all the stories. You're not breaking into a, an iPhone. And no. what is it after 10 repeated uh, failed logins? It, it's a brick. It, 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 it bricks the phone and it's gone. It's dead. So preparing for this, again, regardless of whether you're 20 years old or 80 years old, you know, it might feel a little morbid to do it, a little strange to do it. But trust me, it, you know, it's something that I can say this with all confidence. It's going to happen to every single person. Yeah, Everybody so. is going to have this happen to them. When we don't know, you can make it easier for the people around you if, if they're ready to deal with it. I mean, you, you, you could go as far as writing your own obituary and giving it to somebody and say, just put this in the file. Sit on this. This is what I'd like said. Um, but yeah, yeah you, you may know. have a team, you know, for let's say you're like me and, and Michael, where you have a lot of different clients that are bands, artists, managers, whatever. Reach out to your network of people and make sure that there is a plan for every one of them, that there is somebody designated uh, in case something like this happens, because you don't want to be like Michael described on the other side of this, waking up in the morning and going, okay, now what do I do? I don't have access to any of these things. How am I going to yeah. get access to these? How, things? How, gotta, how, how, how do we put yeah. fires out? How do we inform people? Questions are coming in. People are going, you know, you know, again, I don't say this in, in a good way, but yesterday was it for obvious reasons was the busiest day his website had ever had. People are coming. If you don't have accurate and updated information there, it's just going to create more potential problems down the road. Yeah. You know, so th this is being prepared for being unprepared is kind of what it is. Because like again, that. you can, you, you will prepare yourself as best as you can, but a, a, an event like this, is going to, I promise you, throw you curveballs that you're not prepared for. Yeah. I mean, it's it's tough. Yeah. I, you know, never, ne you know, you never think, never want to have to deal with this as somebody in our roles, but it's going to happen. 
Yeah, and you and I talked about this one time. I think it was the end of the year show, or you know, let's say you have a week off uh, between Christmas and New Year's, or whatever it is, kind of preparing for the new year. One of the things we talked about was, you know, make sure you change your passwords and make sure you update your your socials, you know, the banners and your DSP pages and those things. Part of that kind of housekeeping that you do, whether it's quarterly, annually, whatever. Part of it should be making sure you update that that plan that we're talking about with all of the login credentials for all of your socials, websites, blogs, anything that you have um, access to. Um, just updating that regularly. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, the more you can do, trust me from my experience of the last 24 hours, the less stress you will have because there's going to be a lot of stress regardless. Yeah. But don't let the stress be something that could have been avoided because somebody just didn't give you the password. You didn't have access. Nobody even knew that account existed. Um, do what you can to, to prepare the people around you, the team around you. I mean, if you're with a team that you've been working with for years and you love them and you're going to stay with them, bring them in, you know. Yeah. Have that meeting right now that goes, all right, so when this finally happens, here's what I want you guys to do. Yep. It's uh good advice. It's tough. Yeah, it's, it's not tough. something you want to talk about, but no, but you have to. You have to plan for it. And part of the thing that you mentioned was, you know, you control the message when you're out in front of it fast like that you, there's little chance for misinformation of people thinking they know what happened or guessing or they heard something you want to control that message and 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 to that point it is important to make sure that when that message is created and disseminated everybody in your immediate team and remote team has the same message that means send it to your booking agent Send it to your record label. Send it to your publicist. Send it to whoever has been part of your team. Send it to your label rep at your DSP that you deal with. So you don't ever have to worry about somebody, quote unquote, official, putting out a completely different statement. Yeah. So there you go. It's uh, challenging 24 hours. Yeah. Um, you know, something I wouldn't like to redo and have to experience again, but no, but maybe we're going to have to others yeah. learn from your experience here uh, to put a plan in place. Yeah. Think about it again. It doesn't matter whether you're 20 years old, put that plan in place. Cause you can blink an eye and be in a car accident, collapse from a, a, a defect that you never knew yeah. you had. Uh, got, right. You know, listen, we're talking during, you know, the COVID pandemic here. You could come down with coronavirus and end up in a hospital on a ventilator. In a heartbeat. And pass away. Doesn't matter your age. That's right. So try and be ready. Try and be ready. All right. So. Let's let's move past that. Let's you know once again. Um, oh, thank you so much said. to Bruce and Hypebot and bands in town and Disc Makers for everything you do to support us. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that little red subscribe button on Spotify. Follow us on iTunes. Subscribe and give us a review and a rating. It's greatly appreciated. And. Uh, that's it. Music Biz Weekly Podcast. We'll see everybody next week. Discmakers.com. Use code FREEBIZ for ground shipping on CD orders of 100 units or more, $150 value.